Hi everybody, Russ from My Hammers 11. I hope you're all safe and well. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hitting that bell notification. Um, so you're made aware of any time we put new content on. We have videos going up daily. But sometimes, you know, you're lucky buggers if I'm in a good mood, particularly if West Ham just beaten Chelsea. Uh, I might put in two or three videos a day. Um, so you want to make sure you don't miss any stories, any memories, um, any, any, any sort of experiences from fans and ex-players. Everything's brilliant, so make sure you hit that bell icon. You can see who we've, who we've got today. I'm, I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty stoked. Um, he's been chatting about West Ham all day, so, you know, you can just carry on today. Uh, he played over, you know, he made over, like, over 160 appearances for the club, you know, across, um, across a long time. You know, the, you know we'll, come, we'll go through that and talk about his career. But it's Anton Ferdinand. How you doing, man? How's things? I'm good, thank you. I'm really good, thank you. Thanks for having me. So it's a pleasure to be on your show. Oh, thank you. And it's an absolute pleasure to, to, have, to have you on. It's really, really nice. Um, I know everyone says it, but how's lockdown treating you? How is it treating you? Um, yeah, it's been hard. I'm not going to lie. It's been, hard. it's been mentally hard, obviously, yeah. when you're not used to, when you're out of your comfort zone, not doing the norm. Everyone likes the norm in life. You know, everyone likes routine and it ain't been that. Um, it's been hard, but I found it better when I've found a routine and, and kept to it, you know. Um, but just like everyone else, um, you get on with it and you do what you got to do. Yeah, you do. And I, and I follow you Insta, so you've been working out. So that's... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, like I said, I to, need to do something. Yeah. I know it's, it's bad, isn't it? But, it, but you know, football's back and, you know, we're all, all West Ham fans have got an extra skip in their step today after yesterday's yeah. game, which was, which was pretty awesome. Um, you know, obviously a sad thing because obviously that's one of those games that people will be talking about for a long time, but there was no fans there. That's apart from, I was there, but apart from that, it was, uh, you know, it must have been, must have been weird for the players because it was such an emotional game and there was no one there. Um, weird weren't it it's just weird but yeah it's must yeah it is it's like you know like um the london derby especially at home when yeah. i was upton park when i played it was upton park you know um they're the games you didn't even need to worry about you didn't even think about getting up for them games it was automatic it came to you you know it must be even harder it must be hard now without no fans having to try and get up get up for a game yeah um you know but Say this is typical West Ham. You know, it was like this when I when I was playing. The team was like this. the games that you expect us not to win, we'll win them. Yeah. And then there'll be, especially in a relegation battle, in a game that that we we should win, we don't. You yeah. know, like in 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 my day, in when I was playing, it was say in my day, like I'm old, but <laughs> in my, in my team, it was um. So we went away to Charlton, where we should really win the game, and we got beat four 0 yeah. But then we go to Man United last game of the season and beat them one 0 Like it's just that's just West Ham. We do things the hard way. We do things the hard way. But hopefully, I'm hoping we just do the things that we don't do it the hard way. We win the next couple of games and then we'll be all right by the time we get. We, yeah. get, we don't have to. We don't have to go to Man United again and win again away. That's what, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm worried about. But you're right. It's the West Ham way. So I mean, you know, from you, Anton, you know, and actually. When I interview ex-players, I always say, why West Ham? But you were West Ham from the age of nine, weren't you, really, when you signed? Yeah. Why was West... I know it's a silly question, but why was West Ham your club? Why is it your club? Um, just everything about it. The family feel to it. You know, like obviously, um, Rio was 14 when he signed. I was nine. Um, and a, a guy by the name of Dave Goodwin, who was a scout for West Ham over in the South East London area. Um, he was a, a di our district manager, and he took us both, and I used to go to the Centre of Excellence. So when I was young, it was called the Centre of Excellence, not the Academy. Yeah. Um, but they had Centre of Excellence um, centres all over London. So they had one in South London, one in East London, one in West London, one in North London. And I went to the one in South London, which was in Beckenham. There was me, Kieran Richardson and Ben Watson. All three of us went to that one. Um, and then me and Kieran got fast-tracked to, to um, Chadwell Heath. We did. Um, and me and Kieran, when we were, when we were like 11, we were, when we were like 12, we were playing under 14s, me and Kieran. Because yeah. that's when you started playing. For, that's when you actually started to wear a shirt. was like when you was under 14s. Um, and me and him got fast-tracked there and we started playing games and stuff and it was just, I don't know, just like 
you hear people say it about, say about West Ham as, as a club. Once you play for them, even when you come as a, as a grown up, you come to the club. It does something to you, and yeah. it grips you, and it makes you. It just just makes you fall in love with the club. And I had that at the age of nine. Yeah. You know, I, I grew up in 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 South London. West Ham wasn't my local team. Yeah. Mill was my local team. Not that I've ever supported them. Yeah. You know, but everyone on on my estate supported Liverpool. Yeah. You know. Um, but I always loved Paul Lintz yeah. as, as a kid, you know? And I, so I knew he played for West Ham. Um, and uh, one of my mum's my close friends, uh, her name's Pat, she worked in my primary school. She supported West, she's always supported West Ham because of Clyde Best. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, so she used to always used to talk about West Ham herself. We call her Auntie Pat now. But yeah, Pat... Um, that that's where it come and then I started playing for them, Real started playing for them. And the club just grips you. There's something about the club it just grips you. <laughs> yeah. And then obviously I went I Rio got into the first team and I started travelling everywhere watching him play up and down the country. So I was sitting in the stand with the fans. Yeah. And when you sit in the stand with the fans, it gets there's an even bigger hold on you. Yeah. Because there's something about sitting in the stand, especially away games with West Ham fans, it's unexplainable. I know what you mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's, it's, and it, it's, you're right. And it's, it's weird. Yeah, you're totally right. I mean, some people I speak to, some of the fans, I go, right, so why West Ham? And they go, do you know what? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just a West Ham fan. And you're right. It's, it's part of that. And that's what comes through the whole thing of this sort of channel. It's like, we've interviewed, I mean, you know, I mean, it's only been live for like six weeks. We've, we've almost done 100 interviews already. And all the fans and all the players, it's all about this, this spirit, this community, you know, this, it's, it's this club. And it's, I don't know if we're biased or not, but uh, it doesn't seem to have that sort of grip on other, other clubs. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I think it probably is, but we're sort of in this bubble, this, this West Ham bubble. But I can totally see uh, this. I did, you just got to look at it like this. Carlos Tevez played for West Ham. Yeah. He played for Manchester United. He won the Champions League with Manchester United, but he talks more about West Ham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're if there's right. one club he'd come back to in England, it'd be West Ham. He said the Why? other day, weren't it? He said the exactly. other day. Yeah, Why? yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's not about us. It's not about us being biased. It's 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 a fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that... you know what I mean? Like, let's <laughs> yeah, right. have it right. He he will come to West Ham because of how the fans, how the club made him feel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It gripped him. You speak to look. You in, when I played. How many players came from up north or from from different parts of the country? Yeah. A lot of them now you speak to, and they're West Ham fans. Yeah, it's true. And it wasn't before they came. No, no, you're right. You, you, you're totally right. And someone like Carlos is a great example because you know he wasn't there for a particularly long time with us, but he just got got it, didn't it? And, and you're right. And yeah. you, you see people like. You know, like James Collins, who still lives around the area, and you know, out a bit older on Alvin Martin. You know, these guys are not from round here, so to speak, but it just got them. Uh, and you're right, people like yeah. you know the older guys, like Mark Ward Mar- and Macavelli. Marlon Hare was the same. Marlon Hare was yeah. a fully fledged West Ham fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he wasn't when he first come. No, nah. it's funny, isn't it? It's just, it's just that association with the fans and the players, and I think. It just it just grips you, doesn't it? As you said, and, it, and, and, and I don't think I don't can't recall anyone leaving the club and having a bad word to say about the fans. Do you know what I mean? Um, no. And they never they never forget the fans. So yeah, it's like uh, that is great. And obviously, you know, you went on to play, you know, over a hundred hundred and sixty or I think it's hundred and sixty two or something like that. I think I counted appearances, which was a hell of a lot, man. Um, and and obviously, you know. Since during that time, there was obviously some some really good moments, you know, obviously playoff stuff. What was it like in a being in a playoff game? I think you're probably my first person I've interviewed who was who's been in a playoff final. Uh, so that whole period, what's it like in terms of stress for you? Um, I actually felt more I felt more pressure in that game than I did the FA Cup final yeah. the following year. If I'm honest, yeah, um, yeah. I was disappointed the year before. Um, mm. Personally, I was disappointed. And as a fan, I was disappointed that we lost to Crystal Palace. Yeah. Um, and I was disappointed I wasn't even on the bench for the, for the game um, at the Millennium Stadium. I mean, like, I played left back for the last five games of that season. Mm. Done really well that, and scored a goal against Watford that got us into the playoffs. You did, yeah, yeah. Um, which, was my, which was my first goal for the, for the, for the club. And um, then as soon as the um, playoffs come, 
uh, Alan Pardew took me out of the team and I was a bit gutted about that. Yeah. And then when it came to the final, Ruth of Brevet just got fit and he hadn't played any games and he put Brev on the, on the bench and I wasn't in, I wasn't in the 18 and it, like, it really did hurt me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then you look at it now and it put me in good stead for the following year because all that hurt that I had oh, from yeah. the following year, not just from losing it and as a West Ham fan, but personally not playing and being left out, that hurt was still there. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, you know what, I'm going to change that, take that hurt and change it into a positive and, and I'm now playing, I'm going to make sure that I use this, this 90 minutes or 120 minutes, whatever it may be, mm. to, to change the negative into a positive. And, and as I said, the, um, I felt more pressure in that game. I think, I think the pressure was because I knew I think that was the last year of our parachute payments. It was, yeah. yeah so yeah. I knew if we didn't win that game, I knew we, the club, forget me, forget the players, yeah. I knew the club was going to be in a bit of bother. Mm. You know, and that's the fun in me that I was like, no, we have to win this game. Yeah. Like, do you know, because if we don't, yeah. then people's jobs, people's livelihoods are on the line. Yeah, yeah, fuck. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you, then you think about the fun and you think, like, we need to go up back into Premiership. This is a Premier League club. We need to go back up in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the biggest concern for me was like the the the, the people that you don't see, the Jimmy Friths of yeah, this Jimmy, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Th these people, all of a sudden, if we don't go up and the parachute payments are cut, they might not have a job. The cleaners, the cooks, that like, they might not have a job. So, yeah. like, that's just me. That's just the way I, I yeah, thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. Yeah. I felt. Um, so I felt more pressure in that game than I did the FA Cup final. But to go out there and represent my club, going from the stands to the pitch yeah. and getting that win to go up into the Premier League. Yeah. Every boy dreams about playing in the Premier League and, yeah. and for it to come true with your boyhood club, you know, words can't even explain it. I think my, my celebrations, I was the last one off the pitch that day. Yeah. I think I was out there for about 45 minutes and people were <laughs> trying to drag me in, but I didn't want to go anywhere, you know? And as I say, like, they're the moments that live with me and they will yeah. live me, with me forever. Yeah, no, I get that totally. I, yeah, I mean, I, do you know what? I'll be honest, I don't think, you know, it's like, it's really, it's really um, humbling you, the way the way you talk about the pressure because you don't think of, I think, I think it's an assumption, isn't it, sometimes that people think it's a you know, football players, but actually if it's your club as well, you think about, you know, the consequences of what could happen and it's like, yeah, you know, could you imagine like Jimmy not being around, you know what I mean? Exactly. And things like that, it's like, fuck yeah, I didn't think about it, yeah. it's so true, yeah. You know what I mean, you got, you got, just to name a few, you got Jimmy Frith, you got Shirley who was the cook. Yeah. Um, and Tim DF, who was the cook there as well, but Shirley had yeah. been there for years. Yeah. You know, um, she, I'm not sure if she was even on a contract. She might have been on a week to week. That's just the way they've done it with some of the people there. Yeah. And you've got the kit, the, 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 um, one of the kit men, um, Peter Williams. Yeah. You know, he was, he was a deputy kit man. Would he have had a job the, the following yeah. season and yeah. things like that? So, and these are people that I've known since I was nine years old. Yeah, by the even way. more so. Yeah, like, you're right. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. not even like it's, it's people that I've just known since I come in the building as, mm. as a first team player. I've known these people. They've watched me grow up. So yeah. it's a bit my 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 um my relationship with these people is different. Yes, no, I get that. You know, yeah. My relationship is different to a lot of people within the club because even likes of Tony Carr, that's why Tony Carr put him in his 11. What it meant to me yeah. was. Like it's unexplainable. Yeah, no, he, I got that. Yeah. He watched me grow up. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, like they, these people have played have played a pivotal role in not just me as a footballer, but me as a human being. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it, it I look at things differently, yeah. like that when it comes to West Ham. But I, I, what one thing I will say is I have taken my, the fundamentals that I learned from West Ham. I've taken them actually everywhere that I've been. Yeah, no, I get that. Yeah, yeah. You know, so like if 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 we're doing something, like I'll give you an example. Um, Lucas Neal brought this into our club mm. in the year that we nearly got relegated. Like, if if we are, um, if we're, when we're winning, if we, every time we win a game, we have to bring money in from our bonus, from our win bonus. And um, at the end of the season or every other month, that money, that pot of money would get shared out between the people who worked at the training ground who weren't on bonuses. 
Wow. And I was like, well, how, why are we doing that? Like, not that I was against it, but what I always wanted to know why. And he said, listen, Anton, you got kit men who ain't on bonuses. If, we, if we're like giving them a bonus, do you not think they're going to go an extra mile for us? If you yeah. not think that like, if we um, give the, the, um, the uh, grand staff a bonus, do you not think the pitch is going to be perfect for us? Like it's it's little them little them little um percent them little percentages right. are gonna make a massive massive difference. Yeah. And that type of stuff I took to Sunderland with me when I went to Sunderland. Yeah. yeah. You know, and like I remember uh, um one of the cleaners at Sunderland, we had to beat we needed to beat West Ham last game of the season to to finish in the top ten. Yeah. Um. Otherwise, we otherwise as, as a team we didn't get no bonuses. We only yeah. got bonus we finished in the top ten. And we needed to beat West Ham Upton Park, and we did that. But that one, that win, paid for one of the cleaners to get her extension finished on her house yeah. because of the money that we we was generating for them putting it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And them things mean more to me than 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 anything else. But that was installed in me at West Ham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that makes from, perfect from the, sense. From the age of from the age of nine, not yeah. what Lucas Neil done to me, but that caring side. It, it, not that it wasn't me as a person anyway, but in terms of within football, it was installed in me from West Ham. Yeah, no, I get that. I get that. No, it makes perfect sense. And you're right. And it, it's, but it's also, and so it's things like that, that, that go on behind the scenes. And I think it's nice to have like you talking about that because, you know, some people had preconceptions of Lucas Neil from a fan's perspective, you know, in terms of he was on a big weight, but actually, you know, people only see one version and actually there's there's so many more layers to people and stuff like that and that's why I like getting the the, the ex-players on because they give a different perspective even with the people they pick for their teams uh, you know a classic example is uh, Peter Butler so Peter Butler's a player what hasn't been in any fans 11 but all the all the players I've interviewed players that, that, that with him yeah, it, but Butts is, yeah. It, Butts is a great guy. And he's, you know, he's got a great... I interviewed him recently. He's got a crazy life. He's living in Liberia. He lives in a house owned by George Weir. He's, he's got a mental life. He's brilliant. He's so... He's, he, he's, um, his interview was incredible because the amount of work he did when he was a Botswana manager and the, and the Libyan man, Liberia manager, it's incredible, the story. You know, we moan about yeah. things and he's, like, going to... Like, he's doing these performance camps in prisons and stuff like that so yeah. it's mental but every player like who, who did we have when we had uh, like martin allen we had uh, we had jonah all put butts in and again because we saw different they saw a different side of him they knew what a great player he was when he obviously came yeah. from south end and stuff like that and, and and it's it's true with everything else understanding more about you know what goes on behind the scenes because i don't think anyone really knows that type of thing it's like you know i've never had the opportunity to ask someone like yourself What's it like to play in a playoff final? Now, clearly, it's an extremely stressful time, yeah. compared to, especially for a West Ham fan. And obviously, that fed through to the rest of the team. Because obviously, if you've got that sort of anxiety as a fan, and, and it's a bit like now with Mark Noble and, you know, and, you know, sort of trying to impart some of that West Hamness into the rest of the team who might not necessarily be West Ham fans. Yeah. Um, and, and, and and I and I see that definitely. I mean, yeah. I mean, the year before that, that Crystal Palace one was horrible. I mean, I I, I still do a little bit of DJing like for my family and friends. If anyone asks me to play Glad all over, I still don't play it. <laughs> it's still, I just have these visions of about forty thousand yellow shirts bobbing to Glad all over, and it just I still get nightmares of it. But yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. But that's the thing, and that, that's the great thing about this. Now. What we try and do is is we try and do this this hammers eleven and you know Anton. So basically, the idea is we pick eleven people, eleven players, and the fans will be obviously players that they've seen play live during that time, uh, and players tends to be little people to play with. I think what's cool is if we you could do like a hybrid because you're a fan and you've been a player, so yep. doing like a, a, a combo sounds quite cool. And we haven't had that before, so I'm really looking forward to that. We try and keep well, it to yeah. a four. We try and keep it to a four four two as well, if we can. But if you want to go three at the back, if you want to play wing backs, you can do whatever you want, Anton. Okay. You have carte blanche, basically. No <laughs> I'm going to go. I'll go four four two then. I'll go four oh, four two. Thank you, because I'm not very good at video editing. This isn't my day job. Uh, right. Okay. <laughs> Let's go in goal for this Anton eleven. Who do we have between the sticks? Who we have? Ludic. Ludek McCluskey. 
Oh, Between the stick. Lele, Lele. What a great, what a great bloke. What a great player as well. Yeah, I'll go Ludek. Yeah, nice. Okay. Who are we going to go uh, left back? Left back, Julian Dix. Yeah. Julian. I mean, I've, played with some, I've played with some great left backs, but he, like, I didn't play with Julian. I watched, I watched uh, Dixie. I watched him obviously play when he played with Rio. Yeah. And he was, he was a joke. <laughs> uh, like his, his ball into the front man was unbelievable. And like, he, like, I just, like, he wore his heart on his sleeve. I loved it. Yeah. Especially as a fan, you know, yeah. I think that's why everyone, I mean, he's, there's no surprise, despite, doesn't matter who the, who, how, how experienced, not old, how experienced the fan is. Um, literally, he's appeared in almost like, every, like, I don't know, 70% of our interviews because yeah. he just had that West Hamness, which I think, you know, I think, you, you, you know, in, in the modern day, I don't think we have, obviously we have one or two. We have obviously Mark and, and Deck, you know, they have some West Ham stuff about them. But after them, you know, it's like... Who do you have? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I think that's the trouble with... I think that's why we don't relate to players as much more. I mean, yours yeah. was, was the last era, I think, that because you'd hang around for... I mean, you was around since you was nine years old, you know, with the club. Um, and now it's like if you get two years out of a player or a manager, you've done well with them. Do you know what I mean? They yeah. move so quickly now, but uh, I don't think Definitely. you get that relationship with them. Right, okay, we'll put we'll put June in. Uh, let's go. Let's go right back, Anton. Who we got right back, man? Right back. Um, I'll go Lucas Neil. Yeah, I'll go right back. Good captain. Off yeah. on the pitch and stuff as well. Yeah, really good. Really good on the pitch. He was like, so when we stayed up. Um, well, before we went on the run to stay up, mm. um, when we beat Man United last game of the season, I remember him calling a meeting. And when he called the meeting, the team meeting in the in the um, in one of the rooms yeah. in the meeting rooms, uh, Curbs tried to walk in in on it, and Mervyn Day tried to walk in, and he went, "No, no, it's just players. Like, can you leave the player? But I want to talk to my players." And they left. And everyone was a bit like, Rob, what's going on here? And he was just like, listen, lads, we know what we need to do to get out of this situation, yeah. right? The gaffer's going to give us tactics. The gaffer's going to give us formations and all that stuff. But we know hard work is what's going to get us out of this. Mm -hmm. And if you're not willing to work hard for this team and for this club, then there's the door. And I suggest you walk out of it. Or if you don't want to walk out in front of the lads now, you come and tell me and I'll tell the gaffer to tell you to pee off. And that's yeah. that. That like that was a start, and then we 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 went on a mad run. Went on the mad run, yeah, he did. Wow, God, I'd have, I'd have put that on me so shit scared because it's obviously that Australian like intenseness yeah. as well. Oh yeah. God, all right. I've got Lucas Newey. Let's go. Let's go. Centre halves. Who are we having centre half then, Anton? Um, definitely, obviously, my brother, definitely. <laughs> yeah, um, I read, I read somewhere about obviously because in and, and and I think we're right. In two thousand, was it January two thousand six? You won Premier League Player of the Month, didn't you? Was it yeah. two thousand six? Was that? And that's the yeah. only time that two brothers have won that that award. I think that's yeah. amazing. And for you, to, obviously, that was what was that as an achievement winning Premier League? I mean, I don't think there's been many West Ham Premier League winners of the month. You know, what no. was it like to? Um, no, it was unbelievable. Obviously, a great achievement, personally. Um, and when you look at it, I think there's only 13 centre backs who have won it in total Amazing. since That's the Premier League amazing. started. And it's a good, it's a good quiz, que a good uh, quiz question, by the way, because not many people, no one will get me. No, nah. no one will think about me to get of getting it. And there's a couple of others like Gareth Southgate. You won't think about him either. You won't yeah. think about um, there's other people like, but there's people that haven't won it who you think would have won it. Yeah, you know, so it's I think there's only 13 or 14 centre backs who have actually won it, and uh, yeah. to be in that in that list is is, is great. It's a great achievement. It's an honour. Oh, it's incredible. And how does that happen? Does like does your agent get a call from the Premier League, or does the club get a call and say you've won no, the it? Club, or... the, the club, the club, yeah, the club um, told me I'd won it, and like at the time, I think because I. I got it, I found out about it just before the, one of the games. So mm. I weren't really, um, I was just like, okay, I've won pair a month. Like, it weren't really anything. Thinking. It's only when, like, afterwards, like, a few days after, you know what I mean? Then you see in the papers, like, I'm holding the pair of the month. 
and it's like wow this is unbelievable and then when you research into it it becomes even bigger for you yeah but it was just like it was nice that you know and like i said like listen anything that i've done with west ham it will be um a personal achievement or an achievement with the club the fact that i was wearing the west ham shirt at the time when i won it means it even more to me because like mm -hmm. i said i've gone from from the stand to the yeah. pitch and i'm i know to win that that award i must be giving the fans something that i get yeah, yeah, yeah. i would have wanted as a as a fan watching yeah, yeah you know so like anything like that it's, it's just a massive thing for me yeah no, i get it and and, it, and if it was if it was like i know 12 years later you'd get yourself a yeah a, a fifa card wouldn't you and you'd have because <laughs> that's all the premier league players of the FIFA. mental when you think about it, 13 players of one you know center backs has won it absolutely crazy right okay we'll put rio in who's going to partner with your brother then you can put yourself in? Um, nah, I can't put myself in the team. Of course you can. Although it, I can't. It would be a good team with me and Rio back, I tell you. <laughs> it'd be telepathic. Um, I think, like, yeah, it'd be, it'd be good. But there's two players that I've been milling over all day, and that's <laughs> Slavin Bilic yeah. and Danny Gabidon. Oh, like, they're, the, they're the two that I'd, yeah, partner, yeah. I'd partner Rio with. Slavin was unbelievable for Rio. Yeah. When when he come into the team, any West Ham fan who watched Rio come into the team would would know that Slavin helped him a great deal. Definitely, um, was, along with Dixie and along with uh, Alvin Martin, mm. um, helped him a great great deal. But then I look at Gabs and I played with Gabs and Gabs was probably one of the most underrated players I played with. Totally People agree, don't realise how good he was. Mm. You know, he wasn't big, but he hardly lost a header. Yeah. He was good with the ball at his feet. He was quick. Um, so I think I'm just I'm gonna have to go with Gabs because yeah. for me, like I never had to worry about him. Nah. You know, I never had to. I always knew he was gonna do what he had to do. I never had to worry about him. If someone tried to run him in a channel, I didn't have to worry about him. Yeah. He he was quick enough to deal with it himself. Yeah. Which allowed me to concentrate on my game more. You know, I so I'd have to go with Gabs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 when when you like when you have like when you bring like a forming a new like centre back partnership, do you have to do you like it's the same as a strike partner? I've asked asked TC the same thing. How do you sort of get that partnership together? Do you have to hang out a lot and, and become mates, or is it just like as it work, man? No, we became mates. Yeah, we did become mates. Um, but it just happened in training yeah. and in games. Like the more we played together, the more we um, we just became a good good partnership. Yeah. I mean, like I was quite vocal. I was quite. Um, I was always very loud and very vocal on the pitch yeah. and in the dressing room where he was quiet. You know, he spoke on the pitch, but he wasn't like commanding vocally. But he said enough. But he done, he led by example with mm -hmm. what he done, yeah. you know, on the pitch. Um, we just had that perfect balance. Yeah. And as I say, he didn't have to worry about me, so he could concentrate on his game, and I didn't have to worry about him, so I could concentrate on my game. But also, if we did need each other, we was always there. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so we had a really really good balance. Yeah, yeah. Now, when I, I remember, remember you talked about the dressing room. I remember chatting to um, I interviewed Luke Chadwick the other week. And uh, and Chadders was saying how like you know it was it was quite fun. You had a good mix that 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 year that that oh four oh five season. There was a good mix. Yeah. Mix. He was, obviously Chad was only there for like really one season. Really, um, he's funny. He, by the way, one of the funniest fellows in football. Him, he was way. proper. He's such a nice Listen, guy, isn't he? He's lovely. He's he's so shy, right? Yeah. Until you get a beer in him. When you get a beer in him, he's an absolute. <laughs> he's a different animal. He's funny. Funny. He's a good man. Honestly, we had a great time. He, we must have chatted for about we had the interview, but must have chatted for half an hour before and half an hour afterwards. And he was so like laid back, and he he was so honest. He's like, look, I know I wasn't the best player. I I got dropped and this. I got injured, but I love my time at West Ham. And it's like it was it was a lovely, really nice interview. Lovely guy. Really put you at rest. You know, some players, it's, even in fans, you know, you it's, you always like feel like you're, you're really trying with them. But he was like. Talk yeah. to whatever, Russ. I know. I know. I'm not good looking. I'm not on this. I, <laughs> <laughs> look, come on, Chad. Come, come on. Chad. He's so funny. Right, right. We'll go. We'll go midfield. Let's go. Let's go. Um. Let's go left midfield. Then, Anton, who we got left midfield, man? Joe Cole. Joey Cole. 
Joe Cole. What a player. I spoke with him today on this on the show that I was doing earlier with Coley, uh, Inside Irons. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I was just saying, like, there's one, when I first started training with the first team, like, I remember one of my first training sessions, like, it might have been my first training session, we done, like, a little pig in the middle, but they were, we were in groups. And mm. I was, I went in, went in Coley's group, in Joe Cole's group, and he opened my eyes, man, seriously. We're doing mm. five feet twos, and he opened my eyes, like, we was playing, I was, I was, like, I was nervous in it, and I was, like, terrible. I kept <laughs> giving the ball away, so I had to keep going in the middle. <laughs> and I lost count of how many times I went in the middle. But afterwards, we'd walk into another area of the pitch, of the training pitch to do something else. And the pride he had that he never went in. Like, he's going, Anton, did you see me? I never, <laughs> not, not, in a, not in a boasty way, but he was just letting me know the levels, the standards that you need to be in, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. in the first team. He's like, Anton, did you see? how many times did I go in? I didn't go in once. I didn't go in once. And I was thinking, Joe Cole's chatting to me about this, like, yeah. Like, is he, he, don't need, he don't need to say nothing to me, but he is. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, he's trying, how many times did you go in, Anton? You've got to do better than that. I didn't go in once. You've got to get to that level. Like, and I was like, wow. Joe Cole is chatting to me like this. He's yeah. like, he's giving me a, like advice. This is unbelievable. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah And yeah. he hit the nail on the head. It was just the way that we were brought up. When I became a first team regular, any youngster that was coming in, I made sure they were welcome. I made sure they mm. were focused. I was the first one to chat to them. You know what I mean? So like, it was just the way that it was brought up, and it yeah. was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and same for Joe. He probably, I mean, Joe came in. You know, he came in with sort of you know the, the heart scenario, and he must have had that from from them as well. And so it's like you know, I can see it how yeah. it happens now. You got. Like, uh, it's been sort of a circle of life type thing. He had, obviously, Scott Parker was playing, but he had Nobes. And it was almost like he was the understudy to Parker. And now, Deck is the understudy to Nobes. And, you know, hopefully, Deck yeah. will continue to be the understudy to someone else in a few years' time. But, you know, yeah. it, it's definitely how, how it works. And, yeah, I mean, you know, it must have been... I mean, watching Joe every day on the training field must have been, like, you know... <laughs> Incredible. Oh, it's frightening. It was you just didn't want to be up against him. <laughs> <laughs> I could take the way because you knew he could, he could, he could do something outrageous, and you'd be all over the shop. Yeah, no, you know. That. Um, but I say like he, he, he was fantastic to watch and to train with. Yeah, no, and he, a lovely guy, a lovely guy as well. Uh, right, we will put Joey in. Uh, let's go. Let's go the other side then. Let's go right midfield. Who do you have right midfield then, Anton? I was going to go with Trevor Sinclair, but Yossi Benayoun has to go in. Yossi yeah. Benayoun, telling you, we talk about flair players. He was a flair player, by yeah. the way. But he was a flair player that loved the 50-50 challenge. There's not many of them about. Nah. There's no, not many of them about. There never has been any of them. There's not been many of them about over the years. Like, I'm talking this fella, he could unlock a door, but he would track his runner all the way back to the other end into the defending half to the goal to our goal line yeah, he yeah. was a joke <laughs> he was a joke and I mean like, I'm not, in our dressing room unless you had that graft in you if you didn't have that graft in you you got told to get, get out very, out, very yeah, quickly yeah. Like, in, in our team if you didn't have a cert, if you didn't have certain fundamentals in our team you wasn't work, you wasn't mm. welcomed you know obviously we couldn't say to the player like well pee off yeah. but they wouldn't feel like they, they wanted to be a part of it because Unless you worked hard every day, unless you were, had the work, West Ham work ethic in yeah. you, you can't play for this club. You yeah. can't play with us. That's how, that's how our dressing room was. But he came in as a, as a flair player who was unreal. But we didn't have to say to him, like, you need to graph. He automatically done it. Just did it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it wasn't, not, not, it, wasn't, it wasn't like the, you know, it was, it was quite a... A svelte guy, wasn't he? He wasn't, wasn't like particularly built. He was quite, quite skinny. Uh -huh. he but he was, likes putting he it about. <laughs> but he had a big heart. He had a big heart. That's the yeah. thing. He had a big heart and he understood. I think the club that he was at in Israel, the passion that they had over there, I think mm. that was just installed in him. So yeah. that, that, that um, served him well for when he came to West Ham. He understood the culture very quickly. Mm. Spoke good English straight away, but understood the culture very quickly. And embraced it, embraced yeah. the fans, knew what they wanted to, what they wanted from from him as a player was to work hard first and foremost, and that's what he done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, totally. Yeah, no, good shout. Yeah, yeah, Yoshi, he is in. 
Uh, let's go. Let's go. Set in the midfield. Who's your first set in the midfield then, Anton? Man. Um, Hayden Mullins. Yes. Big Cash. Hayden. Cash. He was the most. He was the most important player in our in our starting eleven. The most important player he was. Yeah. Hands down. If we we didn't have him. We wouldn't have been the same team that we we wouldn't have been the team that we was in terms of you knowing like the excitement. Yeah. Like we went we had no fear playing against teams, especially up to part. We never we were fearless. Especially yeah. that first year in, in, in the Premier League. When we, yeah. there, forgot, we were fearless at home. But mm. he allowed us to be like that because of the way that he played. It was people watching wouldn't understand it. They wouldn't see that side of it because as fans, naturally we look for flair, we look for for that type of stuff, look for skills. is Ole and all that, but he done things that weren't there, weren't good on the eye. But for a player yeah. who played with him, it was so pretty. Was, the appreciation was massive. You know, it's a bit exactly. like Jordan Henderson now. Jordan Henderson, he's getting yeah. the thought it's now because he's won a league. Mm. But you ask any player who's played with him, they will say he's one of the best they played with because yeah. the stuff that he does goes unnoticed. Mm. Mm. Well, it's the same. It's the same as I say. It's the same thing with like the Pete Butler thing. You know, it's like he did all that graft, and and obviously, you know, famously, you know, there was that game. You know, when we played Liverpool just before the FA Cup final, and they both had yep. a fight and got sent off. And and I think we were more in the shit than Liverpool were because Garcia, you could just, you know, he was a good player, could replace him. But Mullins was integral, and if he hadn't got sent off, we would have won. I am yeah. so sure of that. Yeah. Because it was because he you're right, he was one of those players who, from the manager's perspective, would have been first on the team sheet. Not necessarily from the fans' perspective, but again, because it was all unnoticed. And again, same thing. Mullins has come up. The only time I mean Chad has put him in. Um and yeah, I mean Mullins never came in until Chad I interviewed Chadders. Uh, and then obviously then I'm starting to tweet that out and people go, Oh yeah, I forgot about Aiden Mullins and then you know he's starting to appear in more and more. Um, yeah. but yeah, no, Mullins, yeah, yeah, he was a good player, great player and a good guy as well. Um mm-hmm. right, okay, who who's Mullins gonna partner in the midfield then Anton? Cool. Oh. Who am I gonna put in? Who are you gonna put in? Actually, can I change it? Sorry to be like do, awkward. Do, do can I put can I put Joey Cole in midfield with him? Yeah, yeah, of course put you can. Put Yossi on the left. Yeah, and put Trevor Sinclair on the right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course you can. <laughs> of course you can. With. Yeah, we'll put Six in. Yeah, no worries, man. <laughs> so yeah, Trevor, put Trevor on the right. Yeah, yeah, and uh, listen, Trevor Sinclair, man, he was like. Obviously, watching him play and then training with him. I never got to play a match with him, but I trained with him. He was a joke, man. Like his fitness levels, his work ethic every day was like was different to everyone else's. He was a an absolute animal. I remember walking past the gym, and the gym was like the little gym back in the day in um, at Chad Relief. Um, what is now? Um, what is it? It might be the kit room now at yeah. Chad Leaf. It's like a little room. And he was on the treadmill and he was sprinting. But I'd walk past and he was sprinting on the treadmill. He must have been like, it must have been on about 17 kilometers per hour. And he was going at it. <laughs> and I went in the treatment to get a bit of ice. And I come back and he was still on the same pace. And I was like, this guy's still running the same. He's sprinting at his pace. I, like, I couldn't believe it. Like, I, and I knew his fitness levels were unbelievable. But I remember the first time I was ever in, in the squad for West Ham was away at Tottenham at White Hart Lane. <laughs> and my name was on the board. And like, I, I, I didn't have a boot at the time. I was my own boot, but I cleaned my own boots. Yeah. Um, I didn't put my boot, I didn't give my boots to the kit man, Eddie. Um, I took them with me because I wasn't a first team player. So I, I took everything myself, my shin pads, my boots. And I remember we had pre-match meal before we went to White Hart Lane. We had pre-match meal at Upton Park. So I turned up at Upton Park and had my boots with me and my shin pads. And Trevor's just started laughing. And when we we laughing at, he went, "Why did you bring your boots for?" He went, "You ain't gonna need them." 
Like, you just say you're not going to be involved. Like, why have you bought them? And I was like, I was like, Trev, don't watch me, man. I might need them. Potentially, I might need them, innit? I said, but I'm ready. I'm ready. And he just started giggling. And like, like but he was, he was someone. So like, when I came into the first team, obviously, when I started training with the first team, a lot of the players I was training with, they played with Rio. And a lot, of, like, yeah, of course. You know, a lot of them have played with Rio and mm. watched Rio grow up and watched Rio leave for £18 million pound to Leeds. Mm. So a lot of them judged me before I'd even stepped into the first team because they knew I was on my way there. Mm. But a lot of them probably judged me before I got there. But he's someone who always spoke to me and said, listen, you're your own man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what Rio done is Rio. You, it's your time now. You do what you mm. need to do. You know, the likes of him, Jermaine Defoe, that's what they, that they spoke to me, Joe Cole. They mm. always spoke to me and reassured me because I've got to remember a lot of these players, the, the Canio, like they, I trained with them. I didn't play much with them, but I trained with them. They all played with Rio. Yeah, so I had that added point. pressure of going in and training with them. I was like, these guys are comparing me before I even stepped on the pit. They're comparing me with him. The first five minutes of training, they're going to compare me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it, it, it was hard, but like I said, Trevor, Helped me along in that process. Yeah, good chat. I'll put sinks in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice one. Okay, let's go up front then. Who are we going to have up front? This is going to be interesting, I think. Who are we, who's going to be your strikers? Who's your first striker, Anton? My first striker is Paolo Di Canio. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can't not have Paolo in there. Nah, man. Nutter. Absolute nutter. But As a, a West Ham fan, it's impossible. Yeah, it's no, you're right. Opinion. As yeah, a West Ham yeah. fan, it's impossible. Absolute genius of a player. Absolute genius. Uh, I, remember, I remember training with him and like, you know the chop that he used to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chop. Like, you know, it's one of those. You know, because I've watched him for years, I knew his body language. I knew it was going to come. I knew he was going to do the chop, but he would chop. And it's like, there's nothing I could do about it. Nah, Just it's... the way he positioned his body, there's nothing I could have done. I couldn't do about it. I couldn't do nothing about it, you know? But to say, a fantastic player. Yeah. In all when watching him, when training with him and watching him, yeah. I was in awe, always in awe of him. Yeah, yeah, no, I get that. And and he always used to do that, that fake back heel, which everyone used to fall for. And it's like, it was the most, oh, he's like, almost like, he almost telegraphed it. I'm going to do a fake back heel. And he still does yeah. it. And everyone goes, what? You know, he's, he's an incredible player. And that's, and you know, obviously as a fan, you know, I'd, you know, for me, I obviously someone like Payet was probably technically the best player I've seen, but Paolo was the best player because you've got the technicality and the passion, uh, the entertainment as well. He, I mean, you know, football is, you know, it's a sport, but for the fans, it's, they want to be entertained. Cool. And he would here's, a, here's, here's a thing that might take a few people with surprise. Payet wouldn't have got in my, in my West Ham team. No. Nah. In my actual, my, the team that I played in. No. I don't think he would have got into my team. Should have been kicked out because he wasn't putting it about. Put it in. Probably probably that. But even I don't think he gets in our team. We've got Yossi Benayoun on the right and Matty Everett on the left. I don't think he gets in. No. It was a different... And they both, and they, and they both graft. Yeah. I think it's the graft side, it, definitely, weren't it? I mean, it's like, yeah. yeah. I mean, he was... A, he Technic, was... Technically, you technically, can't... He's a no. joke. He's a yeah, joke. He but to get in, to get, like I said, to get in the team that I played in, you had to have more than just technical ability. You had to have something about you in there. Which, yeah. when you lost the ball, you went and got it back. Yeah. He, he, uh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. That, that wasn't Payet, was it? But, but as you said, Paolo, he was just all over the place. He was an absolute you know, joke of a player. He was fantastic. And again, you know, similar to Tevez, you know, just West Ham. You know, he's got a West Ham tattoo. I mean, he's branded himself at the club, you know. And uh, yep. no, yeah, he's great, man. He's great. I love PDC. One day, one day he'll be on. Um, okay, and and who is Paolo going to partner in the up front? Uh, who's his last piece? This Anton Pai. It's Carlitos Tevez. Carlitos. Yeah, he's a good. I mean, again, you know, what was it like? What was it like that whole that whole sort of time when he obviously him and Mascherano just turning up at Chad Ruiz. it was surreal I mean yeah. obviously we knew of them they were they were big Argentinian of course international players even though they were young they were my age yeah when they come but they're already established you know uh, especially Tevez was was established and like I just remember 
for me personally, it was I can't wait to show him I'm a good player. Like, I couldn't wait to get out to training. But then you, you, you get out to training and he was probably the worst trainer I've ever trained with. He's the only player that, that got away with not grafting in training in yeah. our squad. He's the only player that I've seen in the West Ham squads that I've been in who got away with not grafting because we knew on a Saturday he'd be the hardest working out mm. of everyone. But he's yeah. the only one that I but in terms of training he was he was if we were doing keep balls or we were doing like um if we were doing anything like a warm up or a keep ball and that he didn't he didn't really want to know he just try and nutmeg you and yeah. stuff. But he came alive in the little seven V sevens or shooting practice he came alive but anything else he didn't want to know yeah do you know what i mean and it was like it was just it was just crazy to see someone that went from at times in training not really getting above a jog to then coming out on a saturday he's the best player yeah yeah. he was a joke but even his personality that we talk about i've spoken about a lot on there about if to be in our dressing room you have to be a certain way yeah. He couldn't speak any English, right, yeah. when he came. And he had, we had that interpreter, him and, him and Javier. But we went, we went out one night to a nightclub in, in West End Embassy. Tevez come with us. And he <laughs> brought the interpreter with us, with him. He come out. And I'm telling you, one of the funniest things I've ever seen, like, he was on the dance floor for about three hours. <laughs> And I was, I was saying to the boy, this is why I don't train. This is why I don't train. Are they saving himself for the dark stories? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. But he was like dancing away and you see people double taking him. Like, that's, that's Carlos Tevez. That's Tevez. <laughs> like, but he just didn't, didn't care. But yeah. that, that made the boys love him even more. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knew he was, he knew how big he was. He knew he, he was, because we were like Premier League famous he was worldwide famous. Yeah, he yeah, came yeah. for Argentina. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. he didn't care. He was like, he was like, just like one of us. Yeah. And I think that was the biggest thing. And I, I, he was just an unbelievable player. And I, I, he's the best striker I've played, the best player I've played with. Really? Like, always available when you had the ball at your feet. He was always available. He was a joke, man. He was unbelievable. Yeah. No, he was an incredible player, and obviously he 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 famously brought in the cost diet. You know that that one did it. No, uh, someone used it yeah. in the seventies, and then and he did it playing at, for Man United, and then he just just went like that again. I mean, absolutely better. No, he was a great player, and it must have been. I mean, it's probably the same as us. You know, we, you know, you're on. I know it was on BBC website at work, and then your little ticker. West Ham aside, Carlos Tevez and Javier Mascarot. You were like, what? yeah, it was it was mad. He's mad. The it, was, it was crazy. It was crazy. And like, was, yeah, I must say though, if I wasn't doing a, a half fan, half player team, Mark Noble would have been in my team. By the yeah, way, of course, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That fella, man, seriously, I got nothing but goodness to say about him. Yeah, I know. I remember watch. I remember him his first training session with the first team and I was training, I was in the first team, training with the first team. I wasn't playing, but I was training. Yeah. And like, yeah, I think he must have been at about 14 or 15 and he come and trained with, with, with us with the first team. And we was inside and we done an indoor game. I think it was 11, 11 indoors at Chad Belief. And he was playing with uh, Steve, we had Steve Lomas on our team and stuff, who was a senior player at the time. And I remember him saying to, to Lomi, give me the, like, give me the ball. Like, give me the ball. Like, he yeah. was demanding the ball off senior pros. And, like, yeah. I think, I'm not sure, I can't speak for Lomi, but I'm sure man Lomi would be looking at him thinking, you cheeky so-and-so. Of course. You're yeah, 15 yeah. years old. So, but then he, he would give him the ball, but fire it into him, hoping he'd probably <laughs> give it away. So he could say, you ask for the ball, and you're giving the bloody ball away. But Nobs never give the ball. Like, Nobs don't give the ball away. He always keeps it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, and, and, I remember, I remember like, wow, like this boy's 14 years, 14, 15 years old and he is the man the ball for these fellas. And I use that in, in the work that I'm doing at the moment in terms of mentoring players. Yeah. Um, at my agency, Neuro Global Sports Management, I use that story a lot. When players are going into first team sessions, I use Mark Noble's story, the way that he was when he came to first training session with us. I use that a lot because that's the only way you gain respect off of your yeah. senior pro, senior pros is not not to be rude. You can't be rude, but you can back your ability and demand the ball for them one hundred percent. 
Yeah. And I think they respected the fact that he was doing that even at 14, 15 years of age. Mm. No, definitely. But he's gone on, he's gone on, he's gone on to make, he's come up to 500 Mental, uh, um, appearances for the club. Yeah. He's club captain. He, he's like, listen, I've got nothing but, but admiration for the, for, for the, for the man. Yeah. I was about to say for the boy, I, I say boy because I've known him since he was a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for, the, for the man, he, he's just like, so everything that, the, what West Ham epitomises is him. Exactly. I mean, I, I'm, I say I'm, I'm very fortunate. I'm one of the, one of the 300 who can go into the, the game. And uh, so I sit right at the top, right at the top of the box, in the white box by the press. And, um, and Mark obviously wasn't in the squad yesterday. Um, and, and he sat just by the way the disabled guys are just between the press box and the pitch and and he I think it was him and I think David Martin was was two meters away from him and when that third goal went in you saw and I could just see the back of him but I could just see how much that meant to him as a fan yeah. let alone a player he was I've ne- it was lit- if he could have punched a, wall, a hole in that wall he was it was you know he was going absolutely mental and it was like obviously no one saw it but I saw mm-hmm. it, and I and, and again, I just went, you know, the man's a man's a legend. And uh, yeah. so he, no, no, knowing knowing him, first and foremost, he won't want a club to go down because he loves the club. Yeah. But secondary to that, he wouldn't want to be the captain of a West Ham team that got relegated. He wouldn't want that mm-hmm. as the as a West Ham man that he is. He wouldn't want. He doesn't want that on his CV that he was a West Ham captain that got relegated. No. You know and. He don't deserve that. No. For what he's done for this football club over the years, he don't deserve it. No. Well, hopefully yesterday was is going to start again. I yeah. mean, we're. I mean, we have. I mean, you know, West Ham. We have. We have been lucky. You know, you look at you look at the teams around us. I think only since the restart, I think there's only one game which has gone against us, which was Brighton beating Arsenal. Every other one has. You know, been a draw or a loss for everyone around us. So you know, we've yeah. finally taken advantage of that. And Newcastle hammering Bournemouth as well. You know, you look at the next six games, the well, next next two um, fixtures for everyone. Um, we've got two very winnable games. Touchwood, yeah. you know, um, and Villa ain't Villa got Liverpool and someone else. And you know, this Bournemouth... but this is where this is where we got to show character. Yeah, definitely. We got to show character now. Like this, 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 like. It's that Chelsea game's easy because even though we we know we're not we're not favourites to win that game. Now we're playing. We beat Chelsea. We're going into a Burnley game. We're now favourites to win that game because we beat Chelsea. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's different, and but we're favourites. But we have to win for yeah. us. We need three points. The club yeah. needs three points. Yeah. So there's a different. There's a difference, and the I just mentality. hope that. Yeah. yeah, I just hope that. The momentum with us after that win, everyone's lifted, everyone's um, energised. Because when you win a game, you don't feel tired. Nah. That's nah, the hardest yeah. thing. When you're losing, you feel tired. You feel tired quicker. You feel your energy sapped. Yeah. Whereas when you're winning or you win games, you, you can run on empty, but still run through through a brick wall. Totally. I mean, that, that last se- I mean, the season, we, the uh, playoff season, uh, I mean, the last 10 games, we lost one. We, you know, we came out of yeah. seventh and, and, you know, momentum. And it's true. It's all about momentum now. The, the teams that are going to put two or three wins together on the bounce are the ones that are staying up. And, and, that's, and that's the case. And, uh, yeah, no, uh, it, we'll, we'll see. As long as, as long as, you know, as long as Andy Carroll doesn't, Caught us and, and score against us when we play Newcastle. Which I don't think. Oh, no. God, oh, no. Yeah, no. I mean, a, AC's a lovely guy, but we'll see. Anton, man, it's been absolutely amazing talking to you. It's been really Thank nice. You. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. It's been a long day talking about West Ham all day. <laughs> Tessie with Scully. Fucking hell, I know Scully. Yeah. <laughs> I can speak about West Ham for hours. You know, oh, good man. You know, yeah, I know. But with Scully and Colton and Joe and all that, you know, sometimes. Anyway, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. And obviously, everyone, everyone is watching more. We appreciate everything you said because it's really, really, you know, everything you've come is, is really, really heartfelt. So, so thank you so much, Anton. And obviously, thank you for everyone watching as well. Um, like, share, subscribe. Um, you know, obviously, all the channel, all the support for the channel. Uh, really appreciate all the messages and stuff. It's really going. Can't believe we're almost hitting a thousand subscribers in six weeks. It's actually mental. But thank you so much. Um, and for me and Anton, take care, everybody. We'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. See you later.